Okay, let's move to part two of this tutorial one, the cylinder case. So pretty much we're going to do the same as in previous part, but we're going to add the boundary layer. Okay, nothing changed. Okay, just enable that that new flag just to do the boundary layer. I'm playing with those parameters. We assume that we know what all the other parameters are doing. You. I guess you already played with those actions. So look at what we're going to do snappy X mesh. Now put this one to true and we're going to do the three steps. And these are in the end, you have at layer controls and we're going to focus in these options. Okay. So just to let you know that here, there are many combinations, not how you can add the boundary layer. Okay. So here you have these combinations. My advice is to use this one that you see here. No relative size true. Okay. Everything is a percentage to the cell next to the surface after all the refinement. Okay. Be careful. And then use expansion ratio and final layer thickness. So you say that the final layer is 50% of that cell next, and you can put a, also a cap on the minimum thickness. Okay. That, that will be 0.1, probably it's a little bit large, you can put it smaller. And then here you just add the layers. You select the surface, no, the, how you create it at the beginning and put the layers. You can also, this is global and you can have local. You can move it here and you can have different, now different surfaces with different options. So there is no problem. When it comes to the advanced options, okay, do not, do not get lost there. Probably only the, the most important one will be this. Okay, just focus on this one. Okay, and see here, that now we have the effect so it will be i will show you the base case and then it will be to you now to play with this auction but see here relative size true see that everything is in percentage to the cell next to the surface okay so here it's not uniform so see that it will change here absolute sizes okay so see that is the actual distance that you need to give 0 0.025 meters, this is percentage. So see the different, different ways to control. Uh, my advice, this is easiest to control. However, probably this is the most sound way to do it because you are giving now the actual distance. So you can say the first layer is one millimeter, two millimeters from the surface. However, this is difficult to control. Okay. So you put it to small values, it's very difficult to control because here, when it comes to the boundary layer mesh and the prismatic layer, the aspect ratio is very important. So when you put a small values here, that aspect ratio is too large and it's going to, to fail. Okay. So usually to control that, to have those small quantities, you need, you need to have very small, very fine surface mesh. So as you reduce, you, you try and put the smallest values and you will see that in one point, it's going to fail. When it fails, what you are going to do is just increase the surface refinement and you will see that you get, you will get the mesh. Okay. So that is uh, the warning that I want to give you there. Okay. So some actions here, you can measure the distance. Okay. And different combinations. So my advice is always go for the uniform surface refinement. Okay. So see here that you are adding this one that is controlling now the maximum refinement due to curvature or this chart angle. See that is adding more cells there. Instead, it's better to have it like this, okay? And here, see the effect of this angle, okay? So it has different di 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 different effects on the ge on the geometry, now depending on the body. But probably this is the the, the, the most clear one that you're going to see. So see that is you put a, a small value, it's collapsing here in the axis. When you put 130, the recommended one, you have this one. And sometimes this value is not enough. Sometimes it might happen that it's, it will also collapse here. So you can increase that one and you will see in the dictionaries that we have the improved one is 330. Okay. So you might say, well, why not to put the improved one, the 330 there? Because it, it have different effects. Okay. So in this case it might be positive, but in some other cases you put 330 it will be a negative effect. Okay. So it's difficult to, to, to say that this, that is the best value. Okay. But most of the time, okay. Just check that one. This is particular behavior just to the boundary layer meshing. Okay. So final meshes. Okay. You have it there. And here is the steps to, to run. So here I'm showing you with the override auction, but you can, if you don't use this auction, you have the, you, you will say the steps one, two, three is you don't like the boundary layer erase three and restart. And we're going to see that also at the very end of the, of the screen and also log file, you're going to get this report. This report is telling you the percentage 
that has been covered with the boundary layer. So ideally, you should get here a hundred percent, but. Sometimes happens stuff like the collapses of boundary layer or very complicated geometries you are not going to get. So let's say anything above 95% is good. Below that one is not so good. So probably you will need to, to work a little bit more in, in your mesh to get a larger, a larger color as that usually will be that is related to having finer surface refinement. But anything above 95% I think it, it, it is enough, but you should always check where do you where you have problems because if it is in critical regions, it's not acceptable. So, for instance, if for you it's important transition to turbulence, and that you have those those problems there in the regions where you have the transition, that is unacceptable. Then at the end you have these auctions that now we're going to see this. So when you enable these auctions, you're going to save some scalars that you can use to diagnose the boundary layer. So see here that you can plot the coverage, okay, the number of layers and everything. So you have a visual reference of what, what is happening, okay? And the final step that remember that is you are not happy with the boundary layer, you just disable, disable, and restart from the latest one and work only in the boundary layer. Very handy, and I recommend you to, to work in this way. Okay, so let's go to this case, C2, already I am inside here. Okay, and I have a solution. Let me clean this solution. Okay, and let me open. So the dictionaries are the same, so let me go to the snappy X mesh, but you have block mesh and everything. You have the surface features, everything, it is exactly the same. So see that nothing changed. Okay, now you enable this one. And now you are also using these options, okay? So don't get lost in all these parameters. You have here in the slides, you have there where we mentioned what are the most important ones, okay? So here we are going to add five layers using these parameters. Relative size is true, okay? And let's go, Let, let's generate this mesh. Let's see what we have. So let me go here. Okay, so see that this is override. We're not using override, we're saving the intermediate steps. Okay, launching. Okay, it's pretty much the same as the previous case. The difference, we added the boundary layer. So see that I'm running many steps, but see here that at the end you have this report so this is a perfect boundary la boundary layer mesh okay so you will see here that in this case we have perfect because we're using uniform refinement and everything so as you go into surface refinement which should be here see that is uniform if you use non-uniform you are going to to have problems okay so let me now put it here non-uniform and you will see that you might not have that 100% uh, coverage. So let's see what happens here. Okay, so now here you have it. So see that it is there, it is marginal. So see, let's see what happens, okay. Uh, let's visualize the solution. We're also saving the here, the scalars to diagnose the boundary layer. So it's pretty much the same as the previous. The, let me put a cut plane, okay? And to show you the steps. So first, it's doing castellation. Remember, here in this step, it's doing all the surface refinement. So here's you, you have to be sure that you have the right edge size and everything. Okay, so it's doing all the surface refinement in edges, even in points. Points, lines, surfaces, and volume regions. Everything is done here. So now it does the snapping to the surface, and now it will add the inflation layer. It will push away this mesh, and it will place the inflation layer. See that? It put it there. And here we chose the criterion it was the final layer thickness is 50% of the cell next to the surface. Okay, it's in this one, okay, here. After the refinement, it is not the background, okay? So how that is 
how it works. So at this point, you can play with the different options. You can use the first legend sickness, the total sickness, okay? But you will realize that this is one and the one I recommend you to use is, is this one, this combination, final layer sickness. So see that? Put it there, there, and here you have the different combinations, okay? But let's say that, okay, and also let's plot the solution in, in, on the surface, okay, and see what is happening, okay, so we are adding refinement here according not to that criterion to 4, and see that you, you can access the fields, this one here, these are related to the boundary layer, so see that, for instance, end surface layer is telling you that you have, okay, 5 layers all over, Okay, then sickness is giving you the sickness. Okay, so sickness here, 0 0.22, and then it becomes a smaller and a smaller. So actually, sometimes this is, this is funny because you see some information here on a screen that is telling you that it's not 100% coverage, but in reality, when you visualize, you have actually a hundred percent cover and that problem i think it is related to machine precision now you know that here you, you are using small decimals so probably some operations is having problems but as you see here when you plot and surface layers you see that you have a complete coverage okay so it is okay this is covering the whole the whole domain so and now let's see let me open a new case okay and let me put a cup Plane and uh, let me put it at zero. Okay. And uh, let me remove the triangulation. And this is what we have. Okay. So see that it's appeared that it will collapse there, but it's not collapsing. It's just due to the fact now that you are using the relative sizes, but you have a complete hundred percent. So it's always a good idea to, to do some, some visual check, but sometimes, most of the time, the problems are here in these angles when everything is collapsing. But this case is fine, the mesh, and well, you can inspect here, remember that usually I look at end surface layers, and here you can see that you have all over all the layers, and then here you can see the, the thickness, and this is thickness fraction that pro you can use this one to, to plot a volumetric region, so for instance, a volume a isosurface, something like this. Okay, so now let's do something. Okay, so at this point, I invite you to play with all the options. Okay, you have different options uniform, non uniform, surface refinement, finer boundary layers, more boundary layers. So feel free to play with those options. But what I would like to do. And remember that in the previous one I told you that I want to show you how to merge those patches when you do know some kind of selection, extracting some, some isosurface. So let's say, look at that, I use, let me do this. I will use this action and see that, let me do this selection like this. Selection a polyline. And I will select the faces. Okay, you select, remember that you can extract this information. Okay, you have it there. Then you apply the filter, extract surface, apply, and then you save it. Save data, I save it as a STL. I'm not going to save it because I already did it. Okay, I'm going to show you, but let's do that. Okay, so the first thing, is, okay, I want to show you, okay, about that. Uh, let me go here. Mm -mm -mm. And let me go back to two two. So also you saw here now why it's better to have uniform. Okay, so uniform is likely it's going to give you better coverage. So let's say that I will rig the selection. I already start uh, uh, extracted. Rig the selection, and then I will apply this refinement level in that selection. Okay, you see that you have it there four four. And let me do redo the mesh. Okay, we're done. You can go back and let's see. Okay, so in this case, we don't have 100% coverage, so this is likely related now to, 
to this refinement so let's see what happened also we need visual inspect the mesh as you have seen that's not necessarily means so we go to the latest time and see that we have this and see that we apply that refinement in that region okay we selected a region we can also let's see what happened with the boundary layer let me let me apply here a cut plane and let me move it to zero visualize so nice, plane and remove the triangulation so see that here is where it's having problems so see that here clearly you see that is it is collapsing so here is more evident the problem when you have non-uniform meshes so it's having problems collapsing will collapse but all the collapsing is due to the aspect ratio so see that there is this change between aspect ratio between this larger cell and a smaller so here is where everything start to collapse okay otherwise but for the rest it, it is okay and we can also plot here we have access to those fields so see that you can plot here the fields as you put this see that here you see that zero in all these regions you have zero so clearly you see here the collapse so very nice case also you can play around with the options and eventually you might get your way around to get coverage here okay but you at the end you will realize that to get the whole coverage the whole cylinder should have a similar refinement to to this one okay bam, bam, bam. so what i wanted to show you here is that see is you see here that we have two patches here okay this the selection and this one okay when we use this kind of refinement it will create these two different patches and it is not a problem okay you just need to define boundary conditions but usually it's better to have a single one so how can we merge those patches into or those surfaces into a single one so as you go into system there is a new command a new a new dictionary that you put there create patch dictionary and basically what you do here is you can do operations in, in patches many operations the one i'm going to show you here is how to merge so see that you want to create a new patch you are going to give this name this is the type construct from patches and then what are the patches this and this so what you are doing is merging together these two you can have many patches there okay so if you run now create patch it will access the latest time and it will create a new time see time four so this means that you can use the auction override if you are sure it's up but it doesn't matter you can just transfer solutions so you now open Paraphone, go to latest time see that now you have a singular patch problem solve okay so if you are encountering that pa that problem when you are doing this kind of refinement and selecting in Palafone, just use create patch to do it, okay? So now let's say that I don't like the mesh. So I will erase time tree. I will go back to this step and I will say here false falls true okay this one i didn't need and this one is false so basically i'm going to restart from the latest time and just do the boundary ledger remember that you need to enable here latest time in control this so now you will only play with these options here for the for the uh for the boundary layer meshing okay so let's say that let me put this option let's see what happened with this one Okay, instead of the previous one and instead of putting uh, pool three five layers I will use three layers okay so you go just 
snappy X mesh without override and you restart from the latest time and that's all. So actually we got something even worse than the previous one. Okay. Um, let me, there is an state there, so. Okay, so see that, let me go to the lightest time. And this is what we have, okay. So you have all the collapsing here, okay. Here is where collapsing the boundary layer. So you can play around with these options to try to fix that, okay. But this is it, okay. This is how 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 you play. So in this case, I, I force it not to have bad results, okay. But so you use the full options. And geometries like these are, are quite simple, okay. So now let me go to the original file, which is this one. Just com command that and this, okay. We don't need this, okay. And you're going to run mesh, and as you use now the auction override, you you are not going to have the intermediate steps. You are going to have everything already in constant pole. Oh, sorry should be run mesh, everything into, into constant poly mesh, okay? So this is, you proceed like this, is you are 100% sure that this mesh is okay, if you are not 100% sure that your final product will be right, do not use the auction override, save the intermediate steps, and then you have the option of restarting. Most of the time, that is the way how, 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 how I proceed. And let's open the state. Okay, part of you. Okay, okay. And voila, this is what we have, okay? So your exercise will, will be to just play around with all the options for boundary layer, okay? And try to fix the problem that we were having in that selection. It will be not easy to, to fix. Usually, you need to avoid using those refinements, no, non-uniform non refinement, because that is going to give you these problems in boundary layer. So that's all for this case. Thank you very much for your attention. See you in the next tutorial, still the cylinder case. Bye.